In this video, we'll discuss how to discern the truth of statements in predicate logic. Predicate logic, or quantificational logic, or first order logic, extends propositional logic. Now we'll be working with formulas that include constants, functions, parentheses, logical operators, variables, predicates, and quantifiers. In previous videos, we discussed a predicate. Just to refresh our memory now, a predicate is a statement with at least one variable, and the variables must have the universe of possible values specified. A variable with a quantifier is called bound, and a variable without a quantifier is called free. In order to determine the truth value of a statement, all the variables must be bound or specific values must be given to free variables. We've discussed the quantifiers in previous videos, but I'll mention them again now. Now there are two quantifiers that we discussed. The universal quantifier, usually stated for any or for all, and the existential quantifier, which is usually stated as there exist. These quantifiers have higher precedence than all the logical operators from propositional logic. And I just want to show you why this is important, because if we are considering a statement such as for any x, p of x, or q of x, where p of x and q of x are predicates, it's actually the disjunction of those two statements where one is that for any x, p of x, and the other is q of x. It is not for any x the disjunction of those predicates p of x or, or q of x. So let's be a little bit more specific to see what we mean by this. So let x be the integers in the universe of integers. And we're going to let p of x be the statement that x is even and q of x be the statement that x is odd. Now, when we write for any x, p of x, or q of x, because of the higher precedence of the universal quantifier, we actually implicitly mean parentheses right here. So we mean for any integer x, x is even, or q of x, x is odd. Now here we can see in this statement that x is bound. But in the second predicate, x is a free variable. So we can't really assess whether that statement is true or false because we don't know what x is because it is a free variable. Now, if we instead if we had written for any x, parentheses, p of x, or q of x, this would be the statement any integer is even or odd. So it does matter, either we should put parentheses to indicate the latter meaning, or we should understand that the quantifiers are of higher precedence than logical operators. And this is just a concrete example of that. It may be good practice while you're getting more familiar with first order logic to use parentheses. Now let's talk about how we can determine the truth of a statement in quantificational logic. If we want to determine the truth of a statement, an interpretation for a statement must include the following details. We have to give a universe for all of the values for the variables. Next, we have to make sure that we understand for each predicate which values 
in that its universe of variables will be true or false. And we have to understand for each function and constant the specification of their values in that universe. Okay, so let's look at a concrete example of a predicate and how we can tell whether this predicate is true or false. So we're going to consider the predicate qxy. And this is the statement x is the capital of y. So our universe of x will be cities. And our universe of y will be states. And we do know the value of this predicate, whether city x is a capital of state y. And there's no other functions or constants in this statement that we have to make sure that we understand the values of. So now let's evaluate this. So the first one is Q Denver, Colorado is Denver is the capital of Colorado. And that's true. The next statement, Q Detroit, Michigan would be read, Detroit is the capital of Michigan. And that's false because it's actually Lansing. The next predicate, Q, Massachusetts, Boston, should actually be Boston, Massachusetts. This would technically be false because the city and the state are reversed, but if we had it Boston, Massachusetts, then Boston is the capital of Massachusetts, so that's going to be true. But as written, it should be false. So as written originally, and I'll just put an X up there. That's false. And then finally, New York is the capital of New York. And that is false because it's Albany. Okay, now let's look at more statements in order to assess whether they're true or false. So now we have the statement that q of x means x plus 1 is greater than 2 of x. And we're assuming that the domain of all the integers, the universe of all the integers of the variables is the integers. Now we want to assess what the truth values are. So the first statement is going to be Q0. So this is just saying 0 plus 1 is greater than 2 times 0. Well, that's true. And now let's look at B. B is saying that negative 1 plus 1 is greater than 2 times negative 1. Well, that's true also. And now for C, it's saying 1 plus 1 is greater than 2 times 1. And this is false because they're actually equal. Okay, now let's consider the statement with quantifiers now. Now D says there exists an x such that x plus 1 is greater than 2x. Well, we know the statement is true because, for example, 0 is such an integer. OK, so we know that this is true. D is true. And I just want to put this here so we can compare it a little bit later to its negation. So there exists an x, which is an integer, such that x plus 1 is greater than 2 of x. So now let's consider the statement e. And the statement e is saying that for any x, q of x, which means for any integer, x plus 1 is greater than 2 times x. Well, we happen to know that's false. 
And the reason why we know that this is false, for example, is we know that for 1, 1 plus 1 is not greater than two times one. Okay, so that's an example that shows that it's false. So this is a counter example. And now let's consider F. And I just want to observe that F is actually the negation of E. And how do I know that? I negate the quantifier, so that means there exists an x such that we negate the predicate. So when we translate that, we would say there exists an x such that x plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 times x. And that's true. And such a one is uh, such an example of such an x is one. And now we can look at g. And since we know that d is true, we know that g is false. And the reason how I know that immediately is I just want to observe that g is the negation of d. And how do I know this? I negate the quantifier, so there exists x becomes for any x. And then I negate the predicate, negate q of x. So that means for any x, x plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 of x. And we had already seen examples of why this was not true.